is the Radio Shack Pro 2004 VHF UHF scanner, which came out around 1986. This is a uh, piece of equipment with a lot of technical issues, but one of them is uh, the display. This is an electroluminescent display. Uh, we turn it on here, and it's backlit with this electroluminescent panel. I'm going to turn out the lights, and as you can see, this thing is just barely illuminated. This is the low setting. This is the high setting. Now, the camera is much more sensitive. I can, you, you can actually see some light coming out of this thing, but you see the sort of the modeled. That's because the lights are turned down low. To my naked eye, I can barely see this thing. Okay, so this electroluminescent panel has worn out. And that's a problem with electroluminescence. Uh, they do have kind of a limited lifespan. We're going to attempt to replace the electroluminescent back, backlight panel and see if we can't bring that back to life. We will go over quickly just how to open this thing up. There's this single piece metal can surrounding the electronics. And it's held in place with four metal screws, one, two, three, and four. And we'll just go ahead and remove those. With those screws removed, it's simply a matter of sliding this back off of it. Now we can see the electronics inside. Now just to gain access to the electroluminescent panel, we really don't have to remove any of this here, all this electronics in here, but we do have to pull this panel back. And there are four countersunk screws, two on each side. We'll go ahead and remove those. Now with those screws removed, we can now lift this front plate back. And there are a number of cables connecting the main electronics to the electronics on the panel here. You gotta be careful. These, these wires are all very thin and they break really easily. So you don't wanna wiggle them around too much. Now our front panel, is held in place, this panel here, by one, two, three, four, five screws. So we need to pull that panel back in order to get access to that electroluminescent panel. We'll go ahead and do that now. Now with those five screws out of the way, the circuit board comes free. And that's where our panel lives. And we want to be very careful. We don't want to damage any of these connectors here. You can see there's a whole row of connectors, a whole row of pins that drive that panel. Don't damage any of that. Can you, and don't damage that glass. If you do, that's the end of this thing. You can't fix it. What we want to do is remove the electroluminescent panel that's behind it. You can see these two wires here. That's what's powering this thing. Before we pull this electroluminescent panel out, let's, let's have a look at what sort of voltage we are using to drive this thing. I'm going to put my oscilloscope probe across these two points here and here and check it out on the oscilloscope. This is the oscilloscope trace. We're set at 50 volts per division, so that's four divisions. So four divisions, that's 200 volts peak to peak. And our time base is one millisecond per division, so that's two and a half milliseconds per cycle. That comes out to 400 hertz. 
So we are 200 volts peak to peak and a frequency of 400 hertz. You can purchase electroluminescent strips to replace your worn out ones. Now, they're basically generic strips of electroluminescent material. This one is blue. And it comes with its own inverter, which we're not going to be needing. But this, this inverter, you connect it to a 12 volt source. And then from there, it creates a higher voltage AC. We're going to go ahead and connect this inverter to a 12 volt source. And as you can see, it is just way brighter than the original. Now, this material is actually cuttable. You can actually cut it down to size. This is, of course, way bigger than the uh, electroluminescent strip that's in there now. We're going to try to cut that down to size so it'll fit. Now, you can see on the back we have two electrodes. One electrode goes to this large piece here on the back, and the second elect electrode goes to this piece which wraps around the front. And you can cut this thing to any size you like as long as you maintain this relationship here. This thing should work no matter how small you cut it. I decided to test the output of the inverter that came with the electroluminescent panel. I don't have a 12 volt source, but I do have a 9 volt source here. And I'm going to connect that to our oscilloscope and have a look. Okay, although the waveform looks very different, the voltage is about the same. It's about 200 volts peak to peak and a slightly lower frequency. 3 volts per cycle, about 330 hertz. So voltage and frequency wise, our new panel should be compatible with our old one. Back to the electroluminescent panel. Right here along this edge, there's actually some adhesive material holding that panel in. I just took a little scalpel blade and cut through it so I could mobilize this panel and I'll get it to move. In order to get this panel out, I'm going to just desolder those, those wires right from here. Now with those wires desoldered, I'm going to go ahead and slide this electroluminescent panel out. And here it is. Now here's the original, and here's the replacement. As you can see, it's just way, way bigger. So I'm going to have to take this, and I'm going to have to cut it down to this size. The original measures 102 millimeters by 27 millimeters. Go ahead and cut that with regular scissors. Pretty close. I ended up trimming off some of that heat shrink such that the bend point can be made sooner. And I think that will work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these wires here. I'm going, to just, I'm going to remove this connector here and I'm going to cut these wires about there. And I'm going to solder this onto the uh, board to provide power. Okay, I've got the electroluminescent panel slid back into place, and here are my two dangling wires. And I've got to get them through those holes and solder it in place. Okay, I've managed to bend those wires around and get them through those holes and soldered on here. And we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and screw it back in and see if it works. Now that we have the new electroluminescent panel in place, we'll go ahead and turn it on and see what we got. Well, that is considerably brighter than it was before. Much easier to read. Although, honestly, it's not as bright as I was hoping. Perhaps if I had selected a different color like light green or white, but still, this is a significant improvement from where it was. So then, in summary, this scanner is illuminated with an electroluminescent backlight. And these backlights do wear out with time. This scanner is a little over 20 years old. So not surprisingly, it would be worn out. Now, it would, it would be nice if there was a direct replacement available. 
And I believe that there was at one time, but that is no longer available. However, the good news is you can purchase electroluminescent panel material that is bendable and cuttable, and you can easily buy this stuff for a few dollars and cut out just the size you need and slide it right in. So if you need to replace the electroluminescent panel in one of these Radio Shack scanners or in pretty much anything else, it's a pretty straightforward job. In case anyone was curious where I acquired the electroluminescent display, I purchased it from a vendor on AliExpress, which is basically a division of Alibaba, the Chinese uh, internet vendor. And there's the blue that I selected. They come in a variety of colors. In retrospect, perhaps the light green or white would have been a better choice. And as you can see, I really didn't pay very much. It was about $7. And of course, that includes the inverter and the shipping. There are lots of vendors on both Alibaba and eBay for this kind of product. I purchased this mostly on price. Now, during the making of this video, I measured voltages using an oscilloscope. The voltages that were powering this panel plus the voltages that came, you know, with the inverter that drove this panel to confirm that they were compatible. I don't recommend doing that. Uh, I did it really more out of curiosity. What I would recommend is if you need to replace one of these panels, just go to eBay or AliExpress and go ahead and buy some of this stuff and cut it to size and slide it in. And that's all there is to it.